Hey everyone, Music Scene Investigation is on the air. We're glad you joined us today. Rich Wildman here. I'm going to be your host for the big shingdig that we call MSI. We're glad you're with us. I want to let everybody know out of the hat today that uh, over on Justin TV, our signal is dropping like clockwork every three minutes. I don't know why. Honestly, at this point, I don't care. I've had it about up to here with Justin TV, and I think you know what I mean, because uh, if you've tuned in over the last month or so, you've seen it. You've seen the issues we've been having with them. Uh, we are actively looking for an alternative uh, CDN through which to distribute video, live video, that is. We're fairly happy with our recorded video at the moment. The live video just sucks. So, you know, hang in there with us, and we'll uh, get this all sorted out at some point very quickly, I promise you. Until then, you can hear us live uh, occasionally on Justin TV, and you can hear us on uh, live on MSI Radio without any problems at all. Everything seems to be working fine over at MSI Radio. So listen to us there. Uh, you won't be able to see our ugly mugs, but you can hear us. Hurrah! I know. I, uh, uh, there, there are bonuses. Radio has its privileges. And uh do want to let you know that we will, uh, of course, get the podcast, uh, both audio and video, up as soon as possible. So if you do need to see us for uh, God knows whatever reason, you, you still have the opportunity. It's just not live. And that's the way it is. All right, now then, we have a great show for you today. We have a great guest coming on in just a little bit. First of all, however, I want to let you know that uh, everybody can submit music to Music Scene Investigation. If you're an indie artist out there and want to get your music in front of our panel, all you have to do is go to musicsceneinvestigation.com. And uh, you can submit your music at that point in time. It's very easy to do. At the top of the page, click the Submit a Song button, and there you have it. also want to take the opportunity to meet our guest panelist today, all the way from New York City. It's Mr. Tom Chianti. Tommy, how are you, sir? Doing fine, Rich. Uh, as usual, rearranging the studio, creating my... MIDI slash video station behind me. That's all my samplers and synth modules, a little mixer, my patch bay, master keyboard, monitor from my secondary computer. So we're just, you know, taking the time uh, yeah. to indulge ourselves in, in making our workflow more ergonomic. Now, I will let everybody know that Tom is not in the middle of a uh, snowstorm or submarine. We're having Skype video issues as well. Not as bad as what Justin TV is, but Tommy's video kind of degrades on us every once in a while. So, Tom, uh, is the weather winter caught up with you yet in New York? Actually, it's not uh, that cold, but we're supposed to get later tonight rain turning to snow, mixed with ice, and and, and dung. Well, you know, it, it's dung. not that bad. It, <laughs> it's not that bad. We're we're getting right now. We're just now. It's starting to snow proper. It's been sleet and a little bit of snow most of the day, but uh, we're just now getting into the real snow. So. My, I can see my video. It looks awful, or I need to shave. It looks awful. Trust Fine. me on this. Uh, it is what it is. So, uh, But thanks anyway for being here, Tom. I appreciate it, even though you are a little fuzzy. Oh, well, gentle, giant, fuzzy me. <laughs> it, it's been worse. Trust me. And uh, <laughs> not your fault. It is what it is today. Let's go across the pond, see if the video is any better. We're going over to talk with Ian Husbands and our guest panelist, Mr. Dave Carrera from Carrera Drums. Ian and Dave, guys, how you doing? It's him. It's him. It's me. It's that one. Him. Over there. Yeah. Hey, the, the video looked better before I switched it over to you. So, so how are things <laughs> going over there, guys? Good. Wet. Good. It is wet. Very wet. You got um, caught in that, didn't you, tonight? Sorry? You got caught in that tonight, I got caught you? in the wet again. Yeah. This wet. seems to be a tradition over here at the moment, more so than ever, for um, water. Water. Rain. Water, water. Everywhere. Everywhere. Not a drop to drink. Not a drop. 
Well, you know, it could be worse. You could have sharks and alligators and things like that uh, floating around there. There was, wasn't there? There was a crocodile or something that escaped down in the Somerset. And a duck. And a, Yeah, there's a few ducks. There's a duck that the, escapes from a Chinese restaurant. The, really? Yep. Did he have a cleaver in his hand? He did. Did you? Oh, you saw the story? I, I saw something like that. A duck <laughs> running wild and rampant down the roadway with a cleaver. Rich, can I do something very cheeky for my daughter who's watching this? Please do. And and she she better be watching this because um, she asked me to do um, something for Twitter. So here you are, darling. This is for you. So this is a hashtag, and apparently I've got to do a swirly. All right? Hashtag and swirly. Now, I probably insulted everybody on Twitter. I don't know. She told me to do it, so there we are. I have no idea what it means, but at least you did it. We should have Google searched that. We first, should have probably Google searched that. You <laughs> <laughs> should, should have done something there. So, Ian but, hey. and, and Dave, let me ask you very seriously, though, about uh, what the weather situation is over there. I know it's there's wet. been uh, talk of uh, lots of rain and, and stuff like that, but I hear spring is spri- is, has finally sprung there. Yeah, it has. Yeah, actually, the no, daffodils nice. are out. Yeah, it's been nice. Yeah. You should come over on holiday. I should, but come I to Britain for a holiday. There you go. That's a bit for a British tourism. Everybody does come to Britain for a holiday. Oh, do they? Yeah. Older oh, Queen, God bless us all. Yep. Yeah. All that. <laughs> now that you got that out of, of the way. Tracy's you're... watching this. She, she, she's in Windsor. Can you hear the corgis? <laughs> there no, no, that's the chaps. Oh, is it? Oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> you guys are out of control. Whoever decided to put you in the same room made a mistake. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Look at that. It's it's gonna I happen you guys don't remember well. walls there. Yeah, I don't know if they have rubber walls there or not, Tom, but I, I, I would agree with you. They should at least get some. I've got Dave playing uh, drums for the uh, jam band tomorrow with me as well, so I'm um, going to let off some steam. He's actually my boss tomorrow. Well, how are, how are you going to put up with that? The madman's giving me money tomorrow. How about oh, that? Oh, well, <laughs> as long as you're getting paid. You know what I mean? it's, 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 all you've got to do is hit things. I've just got to hit things. It's brilliant. Not yeah. the punters. No? No. Not like last time? No. Oh, I didn't go okay. down too well. Okay. <laughs> you can't hit the customers. I think that's rule number no? one. Anything oh. else goes. Oh, okay. Okay. In I'll, all I'll... fairness, he did think it was a percussion instrument. Yes. Oh, well, uh, he's it's a drummer. It's not the guy's head was shaped like a cymbal. Well, this is, this is what I thought. I mean, you know, <laughs> so, so, people are so picky. Yeah, well, you know, whatever <laughs> sounds good to you, Dave. <laughs> and speaking of things that sound good, I want to talk about uh, Carrera drums. I want to talk about drums in general a bit as well. By the way, nice shirt. And uh, yeah, look at that. You get one free when you buy a brand new retail uh, Carrera drums uh, drum. Uh, now stocks in Foots in London, legendary uh, retail store for drums. So now what? That's you... Foots. Foots in London. F O O T E S. Google it. Uh, Store Street, number 41, uh, and our drums are right at the back, all along the back wall. So Say so, that I mentioned their name. You know, what you're telling me then is not they're, only they're do I foots. have to take... Yeah, they're in foots, yes. Not only do I have to take a holiday to London, but I also got to go buy a drum to get a, a T-shirt. That, Absolutely. That, that proves I was there. Absolutely. Do you measure your, uh, you measure your drums in centimeters or foots? Oh, goodness. It's going to be one of those shows. Now, the question I have for you, Dave, uh, I was yes. pointed at a video that Carrera Drums <laughs> put out not yes. too long ago. This yes. video seemed to show off uh, a bit of drum tech that, that kind of caught me by surprise. I wasn't Price. aware of how this thing worked or, or how. I wasn't even aware you could do this with a drum. Uh, nice. Apparently, there is a thing called a bearing edge. Uh, can you explain this yeah, to me? Yeah, remember, uh, just be very careful, Rich. I do own global uh, uh, patent pending on that. Oh, okay, well, I... I okay. As just long, this time. As long, just as, this you're, time. as long as you're here, I hope I can use the term. <laughs> um, uh, okay, okay. But uh, can you explain to me what this is and and, and how... What you're doing at Carrera Drums is different and more innovative than some of the other things that other people have been doing. Yeah, well, it's, it, it, it came to us that um, 
that, that someone needed to actually design a true bearing edge. And a bearing edge is, is where the head sits on top of the, 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 the shell. It's the, it's the cut that's made around the edge. And um, even even us, you know, we, we were doing it, we were shaving off the wood to make a to make a sharp edge for the for the heads to sit on and uh, be tuned in. And, and, and that's fine. Um, and then we thought, well, hold on a minute. How can they be called a bearing edge when there's no bearings in place? Makes well, this sense. Is wrong. This is this is technically wrong. Yeah. So um, we made the world's first true um, bearing edge with ball bearings. And this is an innovation, apparently. It's a world first, yeah. And uh, I know that you have it uh, patent pending. It's patent pending globally. And people can see this uh, amazing drum that you've put together, uh, a prototype, I'm guessing. It's uh, actually a prototype. We, we, we've got other, um, other, other benefits that, that have come, come from this because we use six millimeter ball bearings. Uh, and they've, it, in testing, it has been found that you can kill the singer, <laughs> um, seriously maim both the guitarists, uh, bass and lead, uh, no prejudice. <laughs> and uh, if if you if you do a triplet in 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 the correct way, you could actually get the keyboard player. So what you're telling me now, Dave, if if I yeah. understand this properly, yeah. is that I've been duped into believing that a bearing edge drum that that this item that i've seen uh in a carrera drums video is uh not what i believed it to be shock horror i mean i'm not a drummer so i i don't know these things the professional edge of your company is being put at risk it's terrible isn't it it's slanderous where where do we get a lawyer from we're in England. So you get oh, one free, I think. Do we get one free? Yeah. You okay, have to cool. get a solicitor. You're in England. <laughs> <laughs> and why should I have to tell you guys that? <laughs> well, you're cleverer than us. <laughs> I doubt it. No, Rich. It was. It was a. It, it, it was a, a bit of a tongue-in-cheek joke um, that, 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 that within the industry and especially drum makers. Um, they got it, uh, and it was a, it was a <laughs> us being a little bit naughty and a little bit a little bit cheeky. Well, when I saw the video, I've, I've got to tell you, Dave, this thing looked like it was something that you could actually put in production and might make a very <laughs> cool difference. Now, that's just my naivety showing through, apparently, but uh, I thought it was a cool <laughs> idea for a snare. It's, <laughs> um, yeah, but every time you change the head, you'll be mucking around with two hundred six mil ball bearings. So I don't, you know, no, it's, <laughs> it, it was just a little bit of a giggle that sometimes we do um, because we because I'm mental when we sit there and we go, do you know what? <laughs> that would be a bit of fun. <laughs> now, now the guys out in the chat room actually like the idea. They're saying, wow. <laughs> the de- bearings give a rim shot a completely different sound. Uh, um, <laughs> you know, uh, the box of crap is out there saying, does it have a, a snare type of deal or is it a uh, on the toms as well? You could you get you your toms tom, done this you? way? You could put it on your drum seat if you want. How did you right. can put? You know, like you've got the, uh, the rings on the cymbals. <laughs> we can have you both. <laughs> Oh God! Build a big <laughs> circular kit. Yeah, a bearing just, seat. Yeah, awesome. I, you could I, you could actually sell that to Neil Pert. He'd buy that in a heartbeat. No, he'd buy it in a, in a, in a heartbeat. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, it it, 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 it it sounds terrible. Honestly, if you <laughs> we 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 hit it and it was horrible. Don't worry. It's it was a joke and it was a bit of a giggle um, and just something that we do every now and again. Okay, and now. We got rich. Yeah, you got and me. Got rich. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've got to admit it. You guys, you I'm guys shocked. had me. I thought this was, uh, you know, an innovative, cool idea that if, if done by you at Career Drums, who I know are doing things properly, would make a huge difference and be a uh, <laughs> a, a big thing in the the <laughs> percussive industry. Apparently, I was duped. <laughs> well. Double layer snare skin. Don't you know I'll do it. Double layer <laughs> snare skin, right? With 200 ball bearings yes. between. Yes, that'll happen Not tomorrow. flattened down, I'll do but it. so there's space. Every time you hit it, yeah. you get like a shaker effect yeah. as well. Yeah. 
You like what, it now? Do that yeah, I want to hear it. Yeah, yeah. I'm done. Yeah. All right. So, Dave, uh, all kidding aside, with the giant, yeah. ball bearing edge, um, patent pending. Patent pending. Yeah. Uh, there's video <laughs> proof of it. Um, let me ask there's you. Gold, there's gold letters as well, which we did. Exactly. Let me ask you the question that, that begs to be answered then is uh, what is on the table at Carrera Drums? What have you got going on? Uh, what have we not? It's, it's, I mean, all jokes aside, Foots retail uh, position. Where? At Foots. What? Right. That's uh, Store Street in uh, London. It's F O O T E S. That's it. Yeah, right. Google it. They, they, they sell your drums, right? They sell our drums, yes. Right, yeah. uh, and they're very nice people. Rob, and his lovely wife, and uh, Nathan, uh, lovely guys. I'm sure they do this swirly hashtag thing. Um, and uh, apparently, um, yeah. So they've taken on taken on uh, to be our retailer, uh, first retailer, hopefully with many, uh, and they're working closely with us. We've also got, oh, I can't remember now, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, uh, seven brands now, um, and the, 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 no, eight, eight now, and, the, and the, the newest the newest one will be the Stealth Kit. That's it had to be eight, because you drummers can't count in Can't count in lots of four. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> set them jazz, set them jazz types. Well, yeah, they do that seven, eight. Uh, what's all that about? I don't know. Anyway. Um, yeah, what else are we doing? Uh just loads of things we're just we're just constantly doing loads of things it's so complicated so uh any uh top Ooh, secret I know, stuff I know, I know what we're doing we're not we're, we're making uh you're not going to find out where they're going but we're actually making uh lampshades pardon me yeah lamp Trust me. lampshades yep, yep. are in drum I, shelves yep out of drum shelves now is it for a famous drummer is it for a famous drummer yeah uh, no, 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 no. That's no. going to be really cool if you're a famous drummer to have all the lamps in your house with lampshades of snares. It's for a famous retail chain. Okay. Now, uh, <laughs> Pinky out in the chat room <laughs> has just gotten the joke. Apparently, we have some kind of lag going on, and we may, we, I know we do on audio, uh, video. Who, who the hell knows what's going on with video? But uh, Pinky out in the chat room says, "So the real ball bearing is kind of like teabagging the snare drum, then." <laughs> you have to be over here in the political scene in the U.S. actually oh, okay, to get that. I okay. think. I, I don't. Teabagging over here means something it's totally, totally different. different. It's like fags yeah. over there for you. Yeah, take take it in the same context, and you'll the joke oh, okay, is there. Okay, I guess okay, I I don't know. Okay. okay. So anyway, <laughs> all right. So you're making lampshades apparently for a top secret location where they'll be uh, <laughs> delivered and or distributed. We really don't know. Yeah, but that was just the odd thing. It was just a random thing that came up. We went, oh, okay. <laughs> now, if if you were making these lampshades, or or better yet, if you were making drums out of say antlers, uh, or with antler uh, stuff put in on it, you know, like tie-ins made, I would know who they were going to. But since you haven't given me any detail, I have no idea. I, I don't know. But, uh, I, I don't know. You're off to get a hot dog next week, aren't you? Yeah. Oh, you got to Frankfurt. Frankfurt, that yeah. The that's, it. that's the other thing. Next week, yes. Um, once I get the uh, all clear tomorrow from my doctors, hopefully, I'm off to Music Messi, which is uh, Europe's version of, like NAM. You okay. know that, Rich, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so it's like Europe's version. Yeah. Uh, you guys have it first, and then, and then we have a go. And it'll be my first time over there, so hopefully um, be good business, good uh Good connections and make a good networking over there. Well, there's no doubt about that. I mean, that's a, yeah, yeah, a yeah. big trade show. I've already got a, a, a massive schedule already. I didn't realize. I got because <laughs> because on Facebook we you know we're quite prolific on there and 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 a lot of the suppliers are linked in somehow. And I put a post up saying I'm going, and then suddenly I've got emails coming. Out. Can you make sure I go to this store, that store? <laughs> <laughs> so I've got this, this list. Can you pick me up a free bag of sweets or something? I'll pick you up a free cheese. bag of sweets. Don't you worry. It'll happen. Some drumsticks, maybe. No. Uh, boom, boom. Oh. You guys have gotten out of control. That's all I can say. <laughs> I, I don't know I don't know where it happened at, but I just know it happened. And uh, Tommy's sitting there with the same look I had on my face just a second ago. You can't see it. The video's not working. Yeah, it's, it's, it's rubbish. Yeah, well, <laughs> wait until you do see it, uh, you know. Okay. 
he uh, he has the same same look on my face. And, uh, you know, the fact of the matter is, Dave, that uh, we haven't had John in a while, which is why I, I wanted to clarify the whole thing about uh, the ball bearing edge. All right. Okay. And, uh, you know, the fact is, when I talked to Ian about it, he did not tell me that it was a joke. <laughs> you wicked man. As I said, I, know, I, I I knew it was a joke. I knew enough, <laughs> but not enough to explain it to Rich properly. So I just sent him a detailed document on what a bearing, a true bearing edge is on yeah. a drum. Yeah. And, and the, it. It's a load bearing edge rather than a ball bearing. But the sad part about it is, Dave, and I got I got to be perfectly honest with you here, is the article that uh, Ian sent me to... Yeah. Did not tell me that ball bearings did not stay with the drum being packed in this edge, as your video alluded to. So I naturally thought that, yeah, okay, so different angles and different types of cuts can be made in this ball bearing edge, but the ball bearings have to fit in there somehow. And I thought you guys were doing it differently and better than everybody else. You could route out a little semicircular groove just get the ball bearing in. we did it even better we, we actually made them v yeah, but that pulls out the top but if you have, v, if you have like a, you v know. powered ball bearings <laughs> <laughs> you can't get better i mean no. trust me oh it's it's it, it puts so much spin and side it is so you can actually affect the sound you, of the drum by you, sort of you, giving you, a bit you, of spin you, on it you can do that and like I say, kill the keyboard player. So like Andre Agassi. All right, all right. All right. I'm, I'm, I've got one customer lined up for you straight away. I can guarantee they'll buy and keep you in business in ball bearing edge drummers. <laughs> uh, predictably, Spinal Tap. These guys would buy you out of stock. There's a few bands I'd like to supply them to. <laughs> Without them knowing. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Enough of the silliness. We've got plenty of that to go around uh, when we're not talking music. And uh, I do want to talk music today, however, because we have three uh, artists who have submitted their music to the show. But before I do that, I want Ian to tell me about what happened last week with regards to uh, to statistics, because we had uh, three artists who uh, were on the broadcast last week as well. I want to find out what the witness statements said, Ian. Well, it was an easy one this week. 100% of our audience who voted agreed with us along the way with song one. Well, there you go. So uh, Rick yeah. Brindell uh, made sense to everybody. Yeah, it was a relatively straight ahead choice. It was, yeah. It was. All right. Well, I'm glad to hear that. And uh, with that being said, I want to get into today's music. So if you guys wouldn't mind, let's go ahead and take a listen to the first track on today's music scene investigation. All right, everybody. This is track number one. Certainly hope you enjoy it.
Song number one on today's music scene investigation. The guys have some good things to say out there about the quality of audio on the radio. Uh, They say it's vastly superior to that of Justin TV. We like to hear stuff like that. Uh, Ian and uh, Dave, let's go to you guys first and get your thoughts on uh, what you think about track number one today. Uh, for me, across the board, everything on this is sounding pretty awesome. The mix and the production are spot on. Love some of that slide guitar work. Uh, the drums sounded great to my ears. Uh, bass was a little bit lacking, but, I mean, that really is a personal preference type thing. Um, I don't know, just Cheryl Crow and some of the stuff she's done. Mm. Problem I have with this, and I don't quite know um, what it is. Maybe Tom can... Let us know a bit more on this. But the vocals seem to be a step away from the track a little bit. I think it was. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. I think it's the reverb that's been used that sort of takes it off of the track, Mm. but not in a good way. You know, we like to hear the vocals. I like the vocals to stand out. But it seemed a little bit separate to the rest of the instrument. The music was being played here and the vocals was there. Yeah. It was enjoying. Yeah. It it was off the mix rather than in the mix. yeah, Yeah. And I th- I, to me, it was a reverb thing. Um, Tom, maybe you can expand on that when, when it's, you get around to it. But, um, uh, yeah, I'll, it'll be my turn. I'll wait politely. Cool. <laughs> Makes a change. Um, <laughs> <laughs> love you. Um, <laughs> but otherwise, yeah, I think it's a great song. Um, the hook could have been a bit stronger. I would have liked to heard some more layering vocals. She's got a great voice. And, you know, I would have built those layers up a bit more. But, I mean, it does stand well on its own. I mean, I think it pretty much is radio ready. And, um, you know, it, probably more an album track for my life than a single. I think this girl's got better songs in her. But, I mean, it's still a great track. All right. And, Dave, what do you think? Very agree with everything, really. Um, it was a good track, easy to listen to. As we just said, the vocal separation thing seemed a bit odd. But um, but that could be fixed. It's easy enough. And as I say, Tom might know something. But other than that, no, it's a, just a very easy song. Uh, works well. Um, seems to have been produced quite well, you know, other than, like I say, the vocal thing. But, yeah, very good. Enjoyed it. All right. Well, I appreciate it, guys. Thank you. And now let's go over to Tom and get his thoughts. Tom, expand, if you would. Okay. <laughs> How's <laughs> this exponential? <laughs> okay. Um, I agree with the guys. I love the track. It's it's very well done. Even though my pet peeve is the hard panning uh, on the intro, I I just think it just starts you off a little lopsided. The song is good. Um, I think it's you know pretty standard there for this type of music, this country, rock, whatever you wish to call it, new country. I really like her voice. It's thick and lush. And as far as it being separated from the track and stuff, I was too distracted more about the the acoustic uh, left and right guitars. There's something going on there, whether they were um, the same guitar split or something, where it just seemed a little distracting. The vocal sat well in the middle. Could be some phasing issues. They were using a slap delay, a tight delay, so maybe sometimes the um, return might have been a little loud. But, I mean, um, the mix is is good. It's just not my cup of tea. I would have probably done it a little different, but um, all the sounds are there. The structure of the song is there, and I agree with Ian. Um, it, uh, she probably, you know, whoever's done the writing, her and, or the band members, you know, they've, they've probably got a bunch of tracks and, and, um, they're perf- they sound perfectly capable 
of writing, you know, really, really, and performing really great tracks. Uh, this is this is okay. Um, as uh, Dave said, e- real easy on the ears to listen to. Um, definitely a concert song uh, that they would play out live, uh, and and the crowd would like it. Um, I think Free Fall was the, the hook chorus or something. And yeah, um, yeah it, it's very well done. The mix is very clear. There's just some things that just weren't sitting right, which tends to be maybe phase issues due to the MP3 compression or something. I don't know. You know, if I, I'd, I'd have to sit down and, and, and really take a, uh, another listen and investigate this to, to, to expand more than to 150 kilos. And um, But I liked it. I really did. It's well done. All right, Tommy. One, one thing, I yep. do think that this would have benefited if the drummer had used a patent pending Carrera ball bearing edge snare. I don't even know why I switched the video over to you, Ian. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, give, I'll, give you the, I'll give you the fiver in a minute. Okay. Awesome. All right, well, there, as long as you're making something out of it, I guess it's okay. Uh, <laughs> All right, guys, let me introduce that track. That track is by a uh, group or a young lady called Brittany Bexton. The name of the track is indeed, as Tom pointed out, called Free Fall. So there you have it. Thank you, Brittany, for sending that track in to Music Scene Investigation. And I want to let everybody know before we get to the next track that if you do send music in to Music Scene Investigation, don't forget to take a, uh, a listen to the stuff that we do, some of the past shows, and uh, even the latest show is available on the website itself. Of course, you can get them on iTunes as well as YouTube. You can subscribe, and please leave comments. We always love to hear what you have to say about what you've heard or what you've seen on the show, except for uh, what the guys are doing over in uh, London this week. I, I would rather not have any feedback on that at all. Well, also, you get I'm a just much kidding. better video quality. It, it's coherent. Well, yeah, yeah, no. I mean, you know, talking ball-bearing uh, drum heads and stuff like that, I, I don't know. It's crazy stuff. Yeah, the, yeah, you guys are the cat with cheese, <laughs> caught with the cheese. <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> More drugs and whiskey. Yeah, yeah, there you go, there you go. Uh, let's see, we'll we do have... Up. A couple of more songs to go through as well, so I want to get to the second song right now, if we could. This is track number two on today's Music Scene Investigation. Everybody enjoy.
Track number two on today's music scene investigation. Now, I need everybody who's watching and or on the show, encourage Box of Crap to stay and be funny. He says he doesn't want to be funny anymore, and we want him to continue trying. Uh, I'm not saying he's not doing a good job. I'm just wanting to keep trying. Tommy, uh, <laughs> we're going to come over to you first and uh, get your thoughts on track number two. So what do you have to say about it? Uh, well, uh, Pinky just posted, uh, is this a live garage or basement recording? It does sound like a live take. I really like the way they had the snare drum all the way over in the closet on the right-hand side and the tom and the kick in the middle and all the guitars all the way over to the left. Obviously, it was quickly set up, and um, some of the channels are, are definitely out of phase. This mix is, is really, really scattered. Song-wise, um, it's, it's, it's an interesting start. Um, obviously, they need to re-take uh, this or remix it if they have it down, because the overheads are off, and they're panned badly or in the opposite direction. Um, and it was kind of very distracting. I mean, the kick would come up in the center, and, and this, like I said, the snare drum sounded like it was in the closet on the right-hand side that they'd open the door every once in a while just to check if the guy was still beating it. But um, they've, got, they've got a good start here. They need to really uh, work this through. Um, Get that vocalist to uh, really push himself, um, clear up the sound, uh, get a better guitar sound, and maybe uh, uh, a few little guitar licks production-wise. Um, but it's definitely demo, and, um, and maybe it's their first time recording with a new setup or whatever, but it has promise, and they should keep working on it. All right. Well, I appreciate that, Tom. Thank you very much. And uh, let's head over to the guys in England and get uh, Dave and Ian's thoughts. We'll start with Dave this time around. Uh, I'm getting about one frame a second from you guys, so hopefully <clears throat> the audio is all right. Let's just, let's just try rebooting the, uh, the video. It's technical, is it? Technical. Yeah, technical. very, very technical. Oh. Yeah, that's better, that? actually. That's better. Ah, there you go. Hurrah! So now, can I hit you? Yes. <laughs> Your turn. My turn. Yes. Okay. Um, the the intro, uh, I'm, I put, it's like a, a let's go. And then the song goes, okay, maybe not. Uh, <laughs> do you know what I mean? It's sort of livened us up. So, whoa, here we go. And then it's, okay, into sort of like a, a lazy 80s Britpop kind of vibe going on uh and then i noted uh, that, that, that what tom said about the guitar as well the guitar needs to be uh more edgy rather than twiddly twee twiddly tee you know soft it's, it seems more it needs to be much more of a funky edge if you're going to do that kind of drive um 
but in in essence the song's great yeah recording it's a good demo it's a good probably a, a workable guide track maybe um but no the song the song's fine the vocal's good uh drums fine other, other than recording but yeah uh, a bit more work and i think it'll work okay this to, and uh ian this to me sounds like a live band has gone into the studio right we've got a tune to record everyone be rehearsed it's gonna be great and then the guy who does the solos and sings the backing harmonies forgot mm-hmm. and he didn't turn up and the guys went oh we'll record anyway because it is missing some elements. There's a long gap in the middle around the three-minute mark, which was just dead air. Um, there was nothing that interesting going on to make you want to listen to that for 16 bars uh, before the song comes back in. Um, so, you know, solo, uh, keyboards, guitar solo, whatever takes you fancy. I can hear a Hammond in there. I can hear a guitar in there as well. So either way, you know, it could, could, could go a lot of different ways, really. But it needs some sort of melodic structure in there to keep you list- your interested while you're listening. Um, and it does need some vocal layering as well. The guy's voice is it's kind of got that sort of 80s indie Brit band mm. feel to it to me, which is cool. Um, lazy slur. A little bit of a lazy yeah, a bit of the old lazy slur and that going on. And, and that sort of couldn't care less mm. sort of attitude. Um, but I think, um, you know, you definitely needed some layering of the vocals in there to lift the, the hooks. I mean, as Dave said, it kind of pounded in and you're like, whoa, whoa, hang about what that hit me. And then didn't really go anywhere that dynamically, there was not a lot of difference between the verses and the chorus and the hook wasn't the way strong it, enough. The way it punched in. Yeah. I thought it was going to be a totally different song. Yes. <laughs> it was like, bah, oh, oh, oh right. yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. Um, uh, there was no dynamic change between the verse and the, and the chorus, and I'm going to put that principally down to is that the band were missing that extra member who would have brought in a different element on that chorus and some backing vocals and stuff to lift it and make it sound like a separate section to the song. Um, there was, yeah, the guitar sound. Mm. It sounds like he needed to tune that. It sounded like he had a couple of dodgy, uh, dodgy slightly out of tune strings, and you could hear it. Or he was, his playing was lazy. One of the two. And uh, some of the rhythm work was a bit sloppy, I did feel as well. Uh, I mean, the band were tight. Um, There were some really nice little stops and runs and pushes in there, which I thought were really nice. Um, So from an arrangement point of view, um, it worked uh, from a written arrangement sort of point of view, but not from necessarily an instrumentation arrangement point of view. Yeah, I mean, there is a good track here. Find your fifth member or your fourth member who can bring that backing vocal who can bring that melodic interlude in that solo and things like that and i think this could go on to be quite a good band all right well i appreciate that thank you gentlemen and uh i want to tell everybody <laughs> who that sorry. song i'm i'm got, sorry Did i've got to miss... rethink it i've got to rethink his comment i've got to do it okay go ahead go ahead Pinky says the drummer could have benefited from a carrera bearing edge snare Pinky, give me your address. The five is in the post. (laughs) (laughs) Tom, Tom, uh, you know, I I think we're getting left out of the moolah here, buddy. I don't know. I mean, there's something behind the scenes. These guys must be sitting on something and not telling us. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I just know we're missing out on cold, hard cash. So uh, (laughs) There's five of us flying everywhere. Yeah, I know it. And we're not getting any of it, Tom. That's what I'm saying. (laughs) <laughs> All right, uh, this song is called, uh, let me bring it up here, it's called Dividing by Zero by Das Blankout, and we appreciate their sending that track into Music Scene Investigation again, Dividing by Zero by Das Blankout, and if you want your music in front of the panel, you know what to do, go to musicsceneinvestigation.com. Who knows, you may even be heard over on Butterflies Radio are better known as Worldwide Indie Radio during their Twitter Tuesday Live. You know, if you make it through the uh, the labs, you go to the hit list, and then from the hit list, uh, yeah, well, you know, it could happen. You could be the one, and uh, who knows? It may happen this month, and uh, that happens on Wednesday, the 12th of this month. That's our next hit list, so you want to be sure to be here for that as well. All right, gentlemen, we have one more track to listen to today. I certainly hope that you, along with everybody else, enjoys it. 
Let's get to it with track number three right here on Music Scene Investigation. Enjoy it, everyone. This is track three. No, I was in you thing had hooks with the eyes of blue It feels so good just to be next to you No games, no blame Just us, the world be the same Like a drug, you take my pain away Heart pumping, blood's going through my veins Oh yeah, blue Can you feel my heart? Can I be the blue? Oh yeah, blue Heart is out of the charts Can I be the blue? Through my mind, you keep me up all through the night time. I'm weak, I'm sore, but baby, Lord, what it's for? You drive so fast, swerving in the left lane. Quite frankly, I'm pretty much insane. Oh, yeah, oh, can you feel my heart? Here I'm a baby, oh, 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 is track number three on today's music scene investigation want to go over to the guys in england first it's because tommy's used to going last in this round i don't know i just make it happen it's in his contract first guys up are ian and dave <laughs> ian dave what do you guys think of track number three i think i'd like a contract please yes <laughs> Can I have one, please? <laughs> that'll cost you a fiver <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, now you're in on it, Rich, and I'm the odd man out. Hey, I play my cards as they're dealt. <laughs> right, do you want to go first or do you want to go? Right, okay. There's a lot of good about this, and they're, they're so bad as well. Um, let's just start with the bad points. Uh, the mix on this is is odd. The, it sounds like, again, the vocal's been tagged on top of an already mixed instrumentation, uh, and then it's been mastered without really considering the, the, the instrumentation. The vocals sound great. There's some really good performances. Uh, he's got a very strong melody line, a very strong hook, um, and, you know, good use of BVs. I mean, stuff that I've sort of criticised the past two songs on. But behind that, you've got a very muddy bass, a very muddy drum uh, drum sound. The bass player sounds like he's doing some wonderful th things. He's a, he's a funky mother. Um, but again, it's all getting lost. And it, it sounds like this track's suffering a bit from the compression wars, where that instrumentation behind has just been compressed and compressed and compressed, and that vocal's been recorded quite nicely, 
lay it on top, and it's just not fitting in with the track again. Um, but, you know, there's some top production going on there uh, in the background, and if that vocal was brought into line with that instrumentation, I think this track would stand out as a clear winner this week. But because it doesn't, um, you know, it really does let it down. It's a real shame because, as I said, it's probably the strongest hook this week, the strongest voice this week, and the strongest use of backing vocals and, and arrangement and generally catchy, grooves, groovy song. All right. Uh, how about you, Dave? What do you think? Everything Ian has said, along with... All right, uh, my turn. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay, go ahead and talk. <laughs> but along with less busy drums, um, it, 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 it sounded like four, four, four bars of recorded loop, you know, and, and that's lazy. It, just just less busy, and then the, the on-the-end stuff every fourth, fourth bar or something, uh, just to make it more solid. Uh, bass needed to be up and more driving, you know, for this kind of thing. You know, it needs to be sort of sitting there, holding everything, bass and drums holding it all together. But everything Ian said, spot on, great, great licks to it, nice tunes, everything else. But where I think whoever, whoever owns this will do well is selling it to one of the many, many, many boy bands out there. Yeah. Um, this sounds like uh, an offer track to, 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 to a record company for a boy band, who, whoever they are, or whichever one they're making up this week. And they make up a number of them every week. Exactly. That's what I mean. You know, yeah. It's one of them tracks that, hi, guys, you know, do you want to buy this for $5,000, blah, 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 and off you go. You know? yep. Simon really. Cowell, are you listening? Get... Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. All yeah. right. Well, I appreciate that. Let's go over to Tom and figure out what he thinks. Tom, what do you think? Uh, well, of course, I'm going to agree with Ian and Dave. Um, it sounds like uh, a you reworked to, an old. Uh, yeah, right, you're next. Um, <laughs> a reworked old He's... Latin freestyle uh, track from back in the late '80s, early '90s. Uh, again, definitely sounds like the track was premixed, and not a very good job was done on it. The guy's definitely got a, a rhythmic hook going, a, a lyric hook going. Um, and, and, and like Dave said, this is definitely boy band um, arena type of stuff um, with dancing moves and flashing lights and all sorts of stuff. Um, yeah, I, I, and I agree with Ian, if it was presented better, um, it, it would have been a contender. It could have been a container. Um, so, it, Tom, can I ask you a question? What? Do you think it would have benefited from a patent pending Carrera bearing drum? Yeah, it did need some crackle and, and some people <laughs> ducking. There's no um, crack included in our drums, by the way. Yeah, okay. <laughs> um... It just really, uh, yeah, it, even if he had layered his vocal, because this is harmonies all the way through, there are just so many opportunities for uh, harmonically driven hooks with background vocals top to bottom. And this, you know, with a good producer, um, the track reworked and made a little bit more current maybe, um, you know, could kill. And um, it's definitely a demo that the guy should shop around. He may want to rethink, you know, uh, the way it sounds and, and, and bring his vocal more in line and let some of the music get highlighted and, and brightened up and, and spread out a bit and uh, just uh, not boom, boom, boom. The vocals came in so hard and, and, and loud, trebly over the track that um, it's a good thing they're as good as they are, because otherwise you, you just wouldn't be able to listen to it. But, uh, yeah, well-written uh, hooks and, and um, great ideas going on. It's just not presented correctly for the genre it's intended to be. All right. Well, I appreciate that, Tommy. Thank you, guys. Uh, the name of this track is called Guess what it's called boom boom and it's by sammy ride sammy ride with boom boom on music scene investigation we appreciate sammy sending that track in to us 
I want to take and uh, get our guys' thoughts. We're running a little bit short on time today. I think it was all about the snare drum that we were talking about <laughs> earlier, the uh, the patent pending patent bearing pending. edge. Um, yeah. So As anyway, opposed to the bearing straights. Yeah, I, yeah exactly. <laughs> I want to get your thoughts on the song of the week. But first of all, I want to remind everybody who's listening out there, if you're really itching to see the video in its uh, – glory and uh, continuity you might want to check out the podcast we're going to get that up as soon as we can after the broadcast it'll be available on music scene investigation.com right, youtube sorry. and on itunes as Good well so uh gentlemen um yeah we're still broadcasting on uh, justin tv i just want to make sure everybody knows that it's crappy on Justin TV, and uh, we got it better here than they do there. So, gentlemen, uh, let me know what you think uh, in regards to your selection for the song of the week. Number one. Number one. Um, commercially, I'm going to go with, if it's reworked and done for a boy band, number three. Oh, wow. Do you feel slightly dirty to say that? I feel very dirty. But remember, I'm, 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 I'm more into modern music than you are. You are. Are you guys you are. wearing pants? <laughs> <laughs> if you haven't seen the, the Lego movie yet. Honey, where are my pants? I, no, I haven't. I haven't either, so it's not you a spoiler enough. on this end. Thank goodness. I was planning on going to see it, but, you know. Everything is awesome. Okay, all right, good. As long as everything's awesome, we're good. All right, now, see, I know that that's part of the movie, but I didn't give it away <laughs> until now. I don't know what I'm doing. The uh, song of the week then, albeit not unanimous, is Brittany Bexton's Free Fall, and uh, we appreciate her sending that in. Thank you, gentlemen, for your thoughts on that. Of course, we want to know what everybody out in the uh, listening area and video area think as well. So if you're in the audience, please go to musicsceneinvestigation.com slash witness. Fill out the witness statement. Let us know what you think, and we'll bring you those results next week. And uh, let you know what everybody said about the uh, music you heard today. Uh, Dave, thanks for being here, man. Appreciate that. Uh, it was always great seeing you. Yeah, thanks we haven't been corrupted in a while. What? We what? haven't corrupted in a while. Well, you've been, you've, been, you've been fully corrupted today and hopefully very soon in the future. <laughs> so we're, we're looking we're looking forward to being corrupted again so uh anytime you want to come by definitely do so and uh, of course ian and tom thank you guys for being here dave we're really looking forward to seeing that patent pending uh bearing edge drum come out so. yeah your, fi your fibers in the post rich don't worry i'll get the hint that's two that's two fibers now <laughs> two fibers then. All the right. Queen's head on and everything. It's the post one. Yeah. Exactly. All right. Thanks for being here, everyone. Uh, we're going to try and work the video issues out, and we'll be back with you again next week right here on Music Scene Investigation. Until then, we're going to play out with Free Fall by Brittany Bexton. Thanks for being here, everyone. We'll see you next time. Hashtag swirly. Hashtag swirly. Hashtag swirly. I don't even know what that means. <laughs> you